Excuse me, could we possibly have a microphone on please, because I can't hear you. I'm sorry.
integral to the things we do. Integrated transport means all routes, whether it be bus, whether it be train, whether it be ferry, whether it be people who use the tunnel, and the tunnel is in our ownership. So it falls upon us to make this uh, to make this difficult, uh, often uh, very difficult to see. One of the factors Gary referred to is the issue in and around the economy. Um, and whilst we are being told by the government everything's great and the economy's on the uplift, uh, the economy always grows slower uh, in the northwest. Uh, I think the economy at the moment is, is the economy, economic growth is so fragile that um, the tunnel toll in our own sort of mini economic scenario uh, may be something that doesn't help the economy, in fact, hinders it and slows it down even further. But at the same time as hailing that the economy is on the on the uh, on the up, uh, Chancellor Osborne cons consistently refers to further austerity packages. Austerity for the Northwest, well, austerity for local government means you are singled out and are hit with the biggest cuts. Austerity for Northwest local authorities means that you are picked out for the most severe cuts and the highest percentages. I won't quote the examples, but we are always hit hardest, perhaps because we lack the number of Tory MPs. So therefore, I think the, the tunnel toll, while being part of the integrated transport network, is also part of the overall budgetary uh, position that the authority finds itself in. Now, individuals can pick which topic they think extra money made from tunnel tolls is spent on, Others can pick ones that are more favourable, others can pick ones that are less favourable, but nevertheless, it does form part of the overall bud budget package. So, any money that isn't uh, is removed by any resolution today would have to be found in other places. So, I'm glad that later on in, in the business, the, the authority is setting a, uh, a freeze on the levy for the local authority, and that will certainly ease the position for any council taxpayer uh, over on the will. Um, and if the money, if the tunnel toll, say overnight, was to be free and pass on to the council taxpayer directly, I think that would be an enormous burden for every single household, particularly in Will and, and elsewhere, that would be uh, impossible to bear. And would not get through a referendum, Chair, I would add. Uh, people would vote against something in even a 10% hike on council tax to pay for the tunnel. So we are in a position where we have to make uh, a budgetary decision in and around that based on the knowledge we have in front of us. My argument has been, since I've come on the authority and before that position, is that this link between uh, the, across the Mersey, or links between across the Mersey, uh, is such a economic, national economic significance that it should have uh, the right to be included in the national uh, road network and therefore funded directly from uh, national taxation as opposed to what is the local taxation situation. It appears our plea last year was unheard, and it also appears that consultation that has taken place at the moment actually picked out uh, estuary crossings for one that will always be told under this government's consultation. So I think, I think if nothing else after today, we need to get lobby in and make sure that that exemption is removed and that we have the right campaign for the tunnels to be taken as a national road network and see how far we get with that. So, so clearly there's those issues. The other issue is that the, the overall budget of the ITA must be robust enough to maintain the running and safety of those tunnels because we would know that the economic damage done by say one tunnel going down or you know, heaven forbid two tunnels being in a state that they couldn't, couldn't remain open would be massively uh, detrimental to our economic recovery. In fact, we'll probably see the economy off overnight. So we have to have a robust budget. And people think that whilst the tunnels are well maintained, there's a reason for that, because the cost of a serious and major repair and damage to the infrastructure of the tunnel itself would exceed, you know, many, many people's budget. We probably have to borrow money to actually do that. So it is well that we, we remember that, that this budget should be robust and a high level of reserves to, to think the unthinkable that a major repair is necessary in the tunnel. So, having said all those things, I, I actually do not believe that this is the right time in the economic cycle 
for us to increase the tunnel tells. But all, for all the, I can see the temptation to do so. Um, from, from my part, um, I haven't prepared any resolution otherwise. Um, but we'll probably, unless someone convinces me that, that the next part of the debate would see myself actually voting against the, the increase based on the fragile economy that, 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 that we uh, are part of, that the tunnel tolls increase this time would be the wrong move. But I do believe, do believe seriously, if we are serious about getting into the national road network, we need to up our game. And certainly, we have one Conservative MP on the other side who should have the EU government. Uh, it would appear that the ground can change overnight when we look at the decision on the A14, which was to be financed by tolls. And so, so happens that the Tory MP had the year of government and that, that decision would be there. So they can change their mind if the right people use the right amount of influence. So, so my view is that we should continue the campaign for the National Road Network to take over the funding of, of the tunnels. In the absence of that, uh, I understand the very difficult decision we have to make today, but I don't feel on the basis of the evidence I've got from the American supporters today. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not going to rehearse the story because, quite frankly, I, I agree with a lot of what Councillor Barrett has had to say today. Uh, I do have a bit of uh, I think, just to add to what Steve has, has had to say, is that constantly on Merseyside, we're all, as well as uh, the one who are in the surrounding councils, are statistically below the national point of level.
make any contributions. If there's no other members from the book, oh, do you want to see? Is this helpful now to see, to see it in print? Um, okay. Well, we do, I mean, yeah, I look at paragraph D. It's probably something that I missed out in, in my contribution before. Uh, I, you know, my everyday life, I, I have to turn up for Unilever, which is an international company, and we have many uh, colleagues and employees who travel on this side of the water uh, and beyond to the tunnel to go to work. I'm amazed, actually, the number of the new, you know, get a bit obsessive about their development. I've done the open mini survey, and of nine people I asked uh, who, who do that trip on a regular basis in their car, only one of them had got the fast tag and they get it run out. So I'm asking myself, fast tags there, significant saving every day. Why why is this these barriers up or why do people not engage it in something that immediately saves them money? Um, I just wonder whether our marketing of the fast tag is as adequate as it should be because there is an alternative out there. So I, I, I can actually have no I have no problem with supporting uh Les's um it doesn't say you second it. I, I presume that I've just had John, John, John second it. So, so that's fine and dandy by me. So, so just the issue about fast tags, that there is an alternative for people to save money, but I'm amazed by the number of people who don't take them up. Yeah, I think that's a very good point, actually, because um, I was going to say from, from my position sat here as chair that I am everything for both of these terms, and I think that we all uh, take the same view that this is always a very difficult and challenging decision and process that we have to go through every year. Uh, it's not an easy process and inevitably some of the kind of recommendations that come to us are challenging. Steve's point is exactly right in the sense that if we were ever to get a free crossing across the river, the only practical way of that ever happening would be for the government to take the tunnels into the national road network. When we've asked in the past, government ministers and the FD officials have been equivocal in the fact that uh, there is no uh, government thinking of taking tunnels into the national road network. And furthermore, I'm glad Steve pointed it out, in the government's consultation on the national network's proposals for both the road and the railway networks, he actually singled out on page 52 of the document that estuarial and river crossings um, will remain on a total basis under the government's policy. Added to that, it also makes the point that new road schemes uh, will be looked at under a toll basis, which is government policy, but apparently doesn't seem to count if the proposed road runs through John Major's former constituency. So, with the government having no clear um, intent of taking the tunnels off our hands, that leaves us in a bit of quandary, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. In terms of the way that you could finance Either it would be via the levy from the council taxpayer, which in any circumstance would be challenging in the current circumstances where finances for local government are so excruciatingly difficult because of the way that the government is behaving. It's actually right on balance then that the cost of the tunnels does fall to the users in that very difficult situation. And obviously, although uh, the cost of running uh, those tunnels is always significant to make sure we operate them not just in uh, a way that is fit for purpose of those key assets that they are for the local groups of the age, uh, but in doing so in a way which actually provides them to be some of the best operators in the world and some of the safest in the world. That does come at a price, but it comes at a price and we're always very conscious and keen to make sure that we operate those in the most cost effective and cost efficient um, way accordingly. I also take on board everything that's been said about the state of the local economy. Whilst I think there's been some elements of encouraging news, or some elements of employment growth locally, uh, particularly some uh, elements in terms of a report that came out last week about private sector employment uh, increases we've had in the local area, I fully take on board just how fragile things are in the local economy, and that remains a very, very difficult and challenging situation that we find, and it would be nice to see the government taking uh, a more thorough approach in terms of the way they look to support uh, our region accordingly. But I think it's also important when we look at this debate that we don't just view the tunnels as an isolated 
um, part of our transport network. You know, we are integrated transport authority. Actually, the tunnels are not only integral to the transport network of the Liverpool city region, but it's actually vital that they operate in an integrated way. And the decisions we take with regard to the tunnels are not in isolation to uh, the overall transport network as a whole. And equally, the decisions that we take when we go through the process of setting the tolls, we can't take in isolation of our overall budget setting process, which we're going to deal with as the next item, which we know is as challenging as it is this year, and inevitably will continue to get even more difficult as we go into the future. So, with that all in mind, I and mean, it's very, very sort of, um, difficult for us to take this decision, um, from the balance of considerations of the opinion that the 10 pence increase that's been proposed is proportionate and on balance the best decision that we can take in very difficult circumstances at this moment in time. However, I'm very, very conscious of the fact that that still represents a 10 pence discount on the authorised toll that could be charged. It's not going up to one pound eighty, the proposal is one pound seventy. And furthermore, and Steve made the excellent point about the fast tag scheme. The fast tag scheme will still um, demonstrate a considerable saving uh, for local users. And your point about actively and proactively marketing the fast tag scheme is exactly right, Steve. Last year was the first time that we'd ever properly done that. And I'm really pleased we've managed to get usage of the fast tag up to 40% of all users. And let's remember, the vast majority of those fast tag users are local residents and local business people. There is a saving to be had, and it works out that every seventh journey, if you use the fast tag, is free. So it's very strong, I think, from all of us that we want to make sure that we continue that proactive marketing uh, of the fast tag to make sure we maximise the uptake and make sure that local commuters, local residents, and local businesses can get that benefit. If there's no further contributions from the floor. Chair, I take on board the reflection of what you said, and, and I, I agree with a lot of it, and, and there is obviously constraints on, on both sides. But given reserves are held, given that there's been an unexpected capital program, the 2.4 million could be found. And I think it is important to send out a message from this that we're not prepared to raise it every year, year on year, year on year. And in time, to make sure that we've got healthy reserves to be able to deal with any kind of issues that may arise, both in terms of any sort of significant issues with regard to the operational maintenance and operational, but also any other sort of uh, opportunities on the transport network and the way that we want to develop a, an integrated transport network that is fit not just for the 21st century, but is fit for a world-class city region, which is what we want to do. But if, um, there's no further further contribution is led you the one Yes, Chair. I'd like to move the motion and remove paragraph C from the, the proposed motion to my motion, which says maintain the existing discount on all price code for cash and fast tag code to level with the effect on the first wave of 2014. And D, your, the authority asked the Director of General, Chief of the Executive, to investigate the cost of the implications as well as any bringing forward a further discount for fast track users in order to reduce the burden of tolls on regular users of the tunnel. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Yeah, okay, thanks, John. Can I now see all members in favour? Yeah. All those against?
kan Tak sekarang. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we we put it to the vote for you. Okay, item five is the 2014-15 budget financial perspective. And John and Dave. Thank you, Chair. Um, item five is the 2014-15 budget financial perspective.
exactly how we spend our money, and that's absolutely vital as a transparent and publicly accountable body. So I think that's really important. Uh, really like to thank and commend you for that. Uh, good. Second area, I'd like to thank all of the officers and everyone linked with Mercy Travel for the way that we worked uh, in such close co collaboration with all of our colleagues right across the districts for a variety of different reasons, uh, making sure that we actually have the most effective and efficient approach to public spending so that we're not duplicating and we actually maximise our resources in delivering the best transport network in what are very, very difficult financial times for the whole of the public sector, particularly the public sector and the local authorities uh, of Merseyside. And at the same time, adding to that, I'm particularly pleased that for the fourth year run, we've been able to keep our levies down because levies are absolutely right. The fact that um, we're not putting um, additional financial burdens onto the district and that we're working extremely closely with them to make sure that we're not adding to the financial pain that's being meted out to them by the government um, is absolutely vital. And equally, it's vital that we're maintaining the static level so we're not actually tipping any of our districts into the difficulties of council tax referendum. So all of that very sort of close, collaborative and detailed work that we've been doing with is absolutely central to the way that we should be operating and will continue to be central in the way that we'll be operating in the world of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. I'm also very pleased about the way that we're continuing to cut our profit audience and becoming and remaining as efficient as possible. The fact we've been able to find £8 million of savings this year in a very, very challenging environment, building on the £10 million plus savings we made last year testament to the hard work of all of us to make sure that we uh, actually uh, gain efficiency or put in our cloth in a way that we can afford. And I've just finished by drawing everyone's attention to the fact that we now have a top of challenge in setting this budget as big. If you look at um, part 11 of this report, it really highlights how tough and difficult the future budget is going to be. So what this has been told and the challenge and the difficulty is going to continue and it will you know, equally be just as tough into the future. However, adopting the approach that we have done for the past couple of years and will continue to do for years ahead, I'm very confident we'll be able to meet those challenges in a way which continues to deliver the very best services that we can for the people, the communities and the economy of the future. If there's no further contribution, if I can then move um, the motion which is attached to your chair's note, which is substantively the recommendation of the report, which is in my name seconded by Councillor Quinn. Is that agreed? Excellent. Item number six. Uh, well, I think it's, it's agreed, it's unanimous. Um, item number six is the disposal of land. Uh, Tony is going to um, actually present that report. I'm just going to make the point that. Um, this part of London does actually fall within my ward. I've checked with the monitor officer and I don't need to declare an interest because I have no personal interest in that. But I did want to make that clear before. So, Tony? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, Yeah. 
what it's looking to do long term um, potentially. Ken? Thanks, Joe. Uh, you saw that in your deal for communities and you came across my area in the night. Um, when we demolished <coughs> about 11,000, the price of the land then was at the maximum. Now, we're lucky to get a third of that price for the land. And what we're having to do now is hold on to the land. So when the developer comes in, uh, we already have developers there. When they're finished one block, hopefully that's going to drive the price of the next block up. So the price of the land at the moment is basically at an all-time low. And you know, as Steve has said, the price has been advertised, so nobody's going to pay more than the advertised price. It's very heavy to press against.